All right, man, let's uh, talk about something Alex sent me from Yahoo Sports. Now, I guess this article was wrote right before the draft, FYI, but it said that one of the key points that it made, it said that the three candidates, Charles Lee, assistant with the Bucks, um, Jaron Collins, I think he's assistant with the New Orleans Pelicans, and Kevin Ali, uh, overtime. Some he does something with the G League's overtime elite, so I'm not sure exactly what he does with the G the G League's overtime elite. But uh, it's it's being said that uh, you know that uh, excuse me that he um, and the other two, Ali and Collins, did not impress uh, Tom Gores in an interview. That he didn't uh, leave those interviews. Um, impressed. So let's talk about it. You got Detroit Lions talk play. I mean Detroit Piston talk playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. So yeah, he said he in interviewed all three, and nobody stood out to him in that interview process. So um, I asked a question a few weeks ago. I said, remember what I said? I said, I wonder is it just who Troy Weaver want, or are they gonna make a decision collectively? Now you got to understand the owner can make a decision, you know, he writes the check, he ultimately makes a decision, now, I don't know, I didn't know if, you know, Tom Gorse is just gonna go along with the go along, all right, get along with the get along, I don't know if he, you know, used his advisor, what's to do this, to be an agent, Ernie, or whatever, or he used Stefanowski, or whoever it was, but apparently, I mean, it just said that he met with him, and he wasn't impressed with none of them, so, I mean, he write the checks, so thus far, you know, we said we heard we was not going to get a head coach before the lottery. And maybe that's uh, part of the reason. The other part was if they won the lottery, they was going to go after Monty Williams. OK, but uh, so apparently he has a lot of say so in this. I mean, obviously, I mean, I just thought he was just a pencil pusher. Like now nah, I don't say pencil pusher. I just thought he was just going to do whatever they said do and he was going to be cool with it. And apparently he ain't. So they all met with him, flew, flew out to Southern California, met with him, and nobody, you know, made an impression. Now you thinking like, oh man, what type of impression did Dwayne Casey leave then? <laughs> oh man. But um yo, I don't think too many people are excited about either can or none of the candidates. The more I read about Jaron Collins, the more I liked about him, but you know, you don't feel that's the move. So if that's the case, you know, what history tells us is he gonna have to dig in his pockets. That's what history tells us. He gonna have to dig in his pockets. You know, don't understand why they didn't inquire about Mark Jackson. It's not a competitive market for Mark Jackson right now. Now maybe they did and he wasn't interested. Okay. We know why it made Doka didn't get a call. But maybe they just don't think they good enough. Or they attractive enough to lure somebody here. I don't think money is a thing with uh, Tom Wars. So, I don't know. But uh, we might get a whole new uh, culture search. Or you might get a situation where... Maybe uh, they get second interviews and they do a little bit better, but the man writing the checks don't like you. Don't matter what, don't, don't nothing else matter. He can bring his own candidates and Troy Weaver might not like him. Don't matter. He can, he can you know, fire Troy Weaver and get somebody else in there he do like. That's the one guy that you got to impress. And ain't none of them three impressed him. So I don't know if he was, you know, accompanied by one of the advisors or somebody with a basketball mind or somebody coached him on what to ask for or he'd been around the game long enough to kind of keep game and know who knew know what but like this uh this process could be a little bit more drawn out than we thought so that's just what it is so i'm not surprised by it but I'm, I'm surprised, but I just thought they was all going to, uh, he was just going to get who Trey Weaver wanted. So, apparently, that ain't going to be the case. That is not going to be the case. So, 
So I don't know where this where this search continues to go at. I mean, with him not liking them, it sounds like he want to make a bigger splash. I mean, guess what? You got to dig in your pockets. Anytime you want somebody to come to Detroit and they ain't always already a winner or ain't already, you know, in shape or, or come assembled already, then you know what it is. Sorry. You know what it is. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to pay up. You gonna have to pay up, so. But um, I just thought you know Troy Weaver was gonna get what he wanted. That's what I honestly thought was gonna was gonna be the move. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm like, oh Troy Weaver gonna plug his boy in, and Tom Gore's like, nope. And I'm pretty sure the advisor of Stefanowski, what's the dude's Ernie Tillman, whatever his name is. I'm pretty sure they have some. They have they had a say so in that. I'm pretty sure. Somebody caught his ear or or whatever. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe he just asked some basic some basic questions and you know they didn't air some well. I'm pretty sure it was some something amongst amongst that amongst that dude. And you gotta be, you know, kind of the uh Collins and uh Charles Lee fairly young too. I don't know if somebody didn't come prepared. I mean, when you interview, you interview a guy that probably know basic basketball, not but being around and spending your money, knowing people that that what he do is invest. You know what? He, you know, guys like him, they learn. Guys like him, they learn the business or whatever they investing in. They learn it. I'm pretty sure he know a thing about thing about basketball. That's why you got people around you. He learned something, but you know, everybody don't interview well. It's just like everybody don't take tests well. I done did so many interviews, you know, interview etiquette classes, and and, and you don't know how to drive, bro. So many etiquette classes and stuff like that, dude. Like, it is what it is, you know. Um, it is what it is. Now, as far as having bad interviews. I really ain't had a lot of bad interviews. I can't remember too many, but it's some where I interview and I ain't get the job. So be it. But it, but it is an art to it, and I will say that it is an art to it. And you know, shit, filling out the application is an art now. I mean, in general, even without you know writing and stuff. But the number one thing you want to know about a, 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 a interview, and that's all dating is. So all that shit is, it's an interview. Excuse me. It's an interview. And you can take, you know, professional, uh, uh, you know, interview etiquette. You can take it right into to the dating team, too, for you guys out there who might be struggling or, or, or wondering or whatever. It's the same shit. You know, first impression is everything. Posture, etiquette, pronunciation, the way you talk it. Now, obviously, you don't want to, you know, if you, you know, you're going out with, with, with Lakeisha from Seven Mile and eh. I'm pretty sure you can just, you know, hey, you know, I'm pretty sure you just trying to hit. You should just tell her, like, let me just smash whatever, blah, blah, blah. But if you like going out with somebody that you like, that square biz, a serious then, or you going to a good job interview, just trying to say anywhere. You you approach Home Depot like you approach a Fortune 500 company. Maybe you might want to put a suit on for that one. But it's all about, you know, y'all y'all dudes wearing jeans and gym shoes. Fuck that. Put some slacks on. Maybe you don't want to overdress for jobs like that, but put some slacks on. Um, put a nice button shirt up. Put a nice tie on. If you don't like wearing ties, or you don't got a tie, or you know whatever, then you put a nice polo shirt, like a nice little button up shirt, polo shirt on. You know, casual version, not with the horse on there or something like that. But belt, you know, put a belt on. Have your pants pulled up. Put some dress socks on. Dress shoes on. Make sure they cleaned up, polished up, whatever. And you know you shake, you shaking hands and looking guys in the arms. You know keeping your elbows off the table. And you ask, you prepared to ask your questions. They gonna ask you what's your biggest strength, what's your biggest weaknesses, and you say, well, you never call it a weakness. You say, hey, I need, you know, I just feel like I can improve. Blah 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 blah. So yeah, it's all, you know, it's all the same, you know. But hey, it is what it is. Check out Detroit Piston Talk playlist. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, the subscribe button, hit the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, increase your chance, get notifications. We go live or drop video. Financially, we want to support the channel. Cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313. Venmo, CJ Good 313. PayPal link description. Hit the link tree. Find me everywhere. Peace.